Welcome back to the Empire of the Isles, a rich Victorian-inspired fantasy world with a distinct style and an exotic cast of characters. For Dishonored 2, we wanted to explore a new location, Karnaka, the jewel of the south. Our approach to world creation is very layered. Our art and design teams work together to create a strong sense of place with a well-realized culture. It's based on the people living there, the work they do, the architecture, economy, the climate, even the food and songs. In order to bring Karnaka to life, we've created a custom game engine designed to support our signature art direction and level design. We wanted Dishonored 2 to resemble a painting in motion, so we've given considerable thought to our lighting and the way it plays across every surface. We've created custom tools to support the interruptible real-time narrative scenes necessary for a stealth simulation. And the same is true for our approach to audio, both in terms of atmospherics and stealth gameplay. All of these details make Karnaka more vivid thanks to our new technology, which we call the Void Engine. In crafting spaces for you to explore, we've got several creative goals. We want the environment to feel coherent and complete, plausible. Where do these characters live and how do they get to work? Is there a, vi a viable pathway that makes sense? Where do they take their breaks or stop for lunch? But it goes further than that. For Dishonored 2, we felt compelled to ask ourselves about the history of a given street or shop. What was there a decade before the player arrives in Karnaka? Often, you can see the layers of history, watermarks on the wall from past floods, peeling posters and advertisements from years ago. We want every market, every alley to tell a story and to offer you the chance to see something novel or intriguing. Dishonored 2 starts and ends in Dunwall, but most of the action takes place here in Karnaka. A religious faction called the Overseers is at war with the Howler Gang. The leaders of both factions are trying to take each other down. You can side with the Overseers or the Howlers or neither. There are many ways to complete the mission. She'll tell you more. I'll wait here in the skiff and take you back to the dreadful whale after you've finished. Everything you see here is rendered in the Void Engine, designed to create atmospheric and exploration-rich spaces. our target, Vice Overseer Burn, we've got to get past a Grand Guard checkpoint sealed off by a wall of light, a cruel security device reinstated by the Duke of Circonos. Orders from the Duke. <laughs> We're losing too many people. Good soldiers blinded by that hallucinogenic powder the howlers use, then stabbed to death or dragged down by the Abbey's hounds. One young lieutenant got hit by an Overseer grenade, and that was it. She was one of the Duke's sister cousins. Shit. Let's hope they do enough damage to each other so the fight goes out of them. That won't happen until someone manages to kill either Paulo or Vice Overseer. We've made much greater use of vertical space for Dishonored 2, encouraging players to explore the rooftops above the streets. The 
storm alters visibility for the AI and for the player. A random storm hits and Emily comments on it. Many of the security devices in Dishonored 2 are powered by wind, a unique feature of Karnaka. So here we're switching off the windmill to get through the wall of light. There'll be a lot going on in this next fight. Drop attack, guards climbing and vaulting, combat choke, and Emily using far reach to pull an explosive whale oil tank toward her from a distance. All right, let's jump forward closer to our target, Vice Overseer Burn. <clears throat> the Overseers are fighting the Howler Gang for the hearts and minds of the people of Karnaka. What happens here will influence Karnaka's future and the end games. The Chanters, the Eyeless, the Eyeless. The Vice Overseer hasn't shared his plans with me. He's upstairs now, so I assume we'll learn something before long. Here we're, we're going to use Emily's mesmerized power to lull a group of overseers into a stupor, evading combat altogether. Mesmerized, they won't notice Emily or even note, remember that she was here. There you are. I feel huh? so empty right now. Far Reach can be upgraded not only to pull objects from a distance, but also enemies, so you can finish them off in mid-air. This time, all of Emily's powers, which are new, and all of Corvo's can be fully upgraded using entirely new skill trees, giving you the ability to customize more deeply. If you're new to the Dishonored series, it's all about options and exploration, playing at your own pace. The game has many different pathways through each mission, and also different approaches, stealth or combat, lethal or non-lethal, and a wider range of, a wide array of supernatural powers that will dramatically change the experience as you play. We're very close to Vice Overseer Burns' office now. seen it, and I feel it in my bones. So this stalemate with the Howlers must be resolved. Burn is giving a briefing using a projector. We're going to plant a stun mine and then link several of the overseers with Emily's domino power. So that whatever happens to one of them will happen to all of them. They share the same fate. Switching off the projector will attract Vice Overseer Burns' attention, and when the mine affects one Overseer, it will affect all of them. Huh. Go check, brother. Right away. There are many creative ways to use Domino. Here we're in the present, when the manor's in ruins. Now we've moved backwards, years into the past, when the manor was still inhabited and guarded. Looking through the lenses of the Outsider's timepiece, you can see the alternate timeline. This is useful for solving puzzles, as you've seen, but it can also be used to avoid or take down enemies. You can watch enemies in the alternate timeline and then step through to execute your plans.